Good, let's run in. All right. Does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns before we start? Yes, ma'am. Um, what about the shrine rate? So coming in, I'm still like very like, I don't understand. Is your is your are your answers separate from your work? Yes. Like I have like my work and it's like that's the that's not Oh well the thing that's got your work and your answers like you should just scan that part. Um, it doesn't really matter so long as it's all in one PDF document. That's really the major criteria. Um, yeah, uh, I thought I would just go ahead and monitor the Discord. One person said on question three for 4.5, do, uh, do we do two different expressions for F and G or just one F, G? Yeah, all right. So um, two, two, do we do on question three, four, five, do we do two different expressions for F and G or just one is F and G? It's two different expressions. They're two separate uh, columns. So. Cool. Yeah, and then Allison, back to your question. Yeah, like I said, it, like it doesn't really matter as long as it's as long as it's all in one PDF. That's the only thing. That's the thing you'll lose points for is if it's not in one PDF. Um, so as long as it's there, as long as you have some kind of organizational structure that's easy for Max to follow, then it's all good. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? All right. A couple of housekeeping notes. Um, what's due tonight? The assignment for unit number four. Um, the exam, the first exam is locked and loaded. It's ready to go. It's on Blackboard. Um, it will appear for you guys Monday morning at 8 o'clock, and it will be due that um, following Wednesday at midnight. So you have three full days to do the take them exam. Um, it's a fair amount shorter. It took me about 45 minutes to complete, which means I expect it will take you somewhere between two to three hours to complete. Um, that's usually the rule of thumb that I use is you know, however long it takes me, I just multiply by three. That's how much time I expect um, you guys to spend on it. So two to three hours to get it done. You got three full days to do it. Um, it covers units one through five, um, but none of the questions are like direct copies uh, from the assignments. Um, one thing is that the that Wednesday, the unit five assignment is also due. So on that Wednesday, you got two things due. You got the unit five assignment. You also got the exam number one. So make sure you plan accordingly and manage your time accordingly. Um, I recommend we're going to finish unit five today. So I recommend doing that assignment sometime this week so that you have all of next Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to do the first exam. So any questions about any of that? Yes, ma'am. Um, so you said editing a previous unit. Are you allowed to like, pause part of the video? It's, it's, the format is exactly the same as the self-study assignments. It's oh, an okay. assignment on PDF. It's a PDF on Blackboard. You get the PDF. So it's not like answering questions? Yeah, you're not answering questions or anything like that. Yeah, so you still have it's the same. Same structure, same format as every as the other assignments. Oh, okay. You just have less time to do them, and the questions are a little more comprehensive. So, cool. Any other questions, comments, or concerns before we jump into today, today's topic? All right. So let's go ahead and get into it. Today we're going to talk about four variable Carnot maps. Last time we talked about two and three. Today we're going to talk about four. That'll wrap up our discussion on Chrono Maps. So let's start by revisiting, just to make sure it's still fresh in our mind, um, that concept of adjacency. So I would say this. For a Boolean expression of four variables, let's get a little definition going. same adjacency rules apply and by that I mean if we did for example this we said min term 5 or min term 1 which in binary notation min term 5 is just 0 1 0, 1, or min term 1, which in binary notation is 0, 0, 0, 1. Remember that we look for adjacency by asking the question, is there only one bit in difference between both of these terms? And in this case, there is, right? There is the term in the second position here. It goes from 0 to 1. But in every other space, 
the first term is zero and zero, the third term is zero and zero, and the fourth term is zero, or excuse me, is one and one, right? So for these two terms, only one bit position is different. And so these terms will combine, and that's the one that gets removed, right? So we'll have zero dash zero one. If we were to write that as a Boolean expression, min term five would be a prime b c prime d, or min term one would be a prime b prime c prime d. Now that would equal zero dash zero one is going to be a prime for zero. The dash means that the b gets omitted. Then we have zero one, which is c prime and d. Cool. We talked about this last time. Are there any questions about this rule of adjacency? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you write the first one as we can't like on the second one you like omitted the dash? Or like you put in the final solution? Can we do that for the zero one? Uh, no, you can't do that because you still have to account for the fact that it's a four variable function. You're saying, can you omit the dash here? Yeah, yeah no, you want to keep the dash. Because remember, it's still going to tell you, that you still got to come back to Boolean expressions at some point, right? So if it's a four variable expression, every term still got to have four variables. So you still have to keep track of the fact that that's A, that would be B, and that's C, and that's D, right? So you still have to mark the place for B. Otherwise, how would you know if I just had 0, 0, 1 in binary notation, what would you expect that to be? What's that? Just ABC. Well, you expect it to be a three variable term, yeah, but you'd expect this to be well, green, right? A prime, B prime, C, right? So if you only see four or three things, you assume that it's a three variable term. So you've got to keep the dash in to remind you that there is a thing there that you're just not, that you're omitting. That's a good question. All right. So moving on. Now let's talk about the structure of a four variable gamma. Structure of a four variable map. So if we're given a Boolean function of four variables, that is, we have f, which we're going to say is a function of a, b, c, and D, our K map is going to look like this. It's a big box. Form that will cut in quarters both horizontally and vertically. So there's the horizontal cut. And then one stem off to the side. It's harder to do stems now. There we go. Okay. So that's our basic empty K map. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So I can use again. I don't have to redraw it. Copy. Okay. So for our function f, 
on the top side of the stem we'll have A and B, on the bottom side we'll have C and D. We'll label the left hand side in the exact same way we did for the three variable map. So that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. And the top side we'll label that one in exactly the same way as well. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. You know what? I'm going to copy this one actually. Okay. So that's the basic structure. Sometimes it's helpful to keep track of the actual numbers for the cells, since remember they correspond to the min terms or max terms. So they're going to be ordered like this. We'll have 0, 1, 3, 2, remember we're keeping that adjacency, then 4, 5, 7, 6, and then we skip a column to do 8, 9, 11, 10, and then the third column is um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, and 14. So there's our basic structure. This is the way the map is laid out. Are there any questions about that? All right. So now let's go ahead and just work out some examples. And that's actually all we're going to do today is just sort of hammer out some interesting examples. We'll probably get out about 10 minutes early or so. All right. So first example. I'm going to say plot the given Boolean function on map. going to be a function of A, B, C, and D, like usual, and it's going to be equal to A, C, and D, or A prime, B, or D prime. So we did an example like this last time, right, where we start with a function and we're going to reverse engineer that function. So we're going to plot that on the map. So let me... Put my map where I want to go. Sort of like that. It's close enough. All right. So let's start with the easiest term. Or what I think is the easiest term. Let's start with D prime. Where on the map would we get a grouping that would give us just D prime? Second box. What's that? You're absolutely correct. The first line, the first row, and the last row. Right? Since we have d equals zero on the top row and d equals zero on the bottom row, that means since that term is just d equals zero, it doesn't care about anything else, we're going to have ones at the first line, first row, and at the bottom line, bottom row. Just like that. All right, how about the next guy? A prime or B? The second column. The second column, yeah. Since the second column is dependent on A equals 0, B equals 1, or A prime or B, that means that that's that whole entire column. Now we've already got ones at the top and bottom, so we don't need to add anymore, so we'll just add our ones down there. Maybe we'll make a note there that it covers both of them. All right, now the last one, A and C and D. Oops. 
the right column, third one down. Let's see. So, well, hold on. When you say the right column, what do you mean? For this column? Yeah. Uh, third cell down. Okay. And the third cell down. So that's one, zero, one, one. So that would be A, B prime, C, D. You're pretty close, but it's not just that. And would it also be the you know, second one down? What's that? The second one down as well. You mean this one? Yeah. Not that one. A, C, D. No, one next to the next Yeah, the next one, right? So it's A, so you're looking where A is equal to 1, right? Which is both of those. Yeah? And then, or, and C and D, right? Which is where C and D is 1, 1. Yeah, right there. Okay. So yeah, so we're going to have, for A, C, D, that term is going to be there and there. Cool. All right, cool. So, any other questions about this example? No, let's do another one. So let's say now that f is a function of a, b, c, d, and is equal to, here are the sum of midterms, one, three, Four, five, ten, twelve, and thirteen. So the first thing we do is we'll drop in our empty four variable map. Something like that. And now remember we put ones where it's listed as a min term and zeros everywhere else. So we'll have let's see. So zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So you look in the sum of midterms expression, the generalized midterm expansion expansion. Wherever it's listed, it gets a 1. Everywhere else gets a 0. And then we set about combining terms as best we can. So what can we combine? What's that? Two ones on the left. Maybe two? Yeah. All right. And what is that going to get us? So it's in the zero, 0 column for A and B, so it's definitely going to be A prime, B prime. Then we look and see that it splits C, C equals 0, C equals 1, but then it's D equals 1. So A prime, B prime, D. All right, what else? Top row and two in the middle. You mean this group of four? Top, these guys? Uh, those two, yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, so we combine those 
goes to to make group of four, and what's that going to get us? Absolutely right. B and C not. What else? What's that? Yeah, the last term by itself. They can't combine with anything else because it's all there, all by its lonesome. So yeah, so sometimes you just get a term that's by itself and can't do anything. And that one just is the min term, right? Zero, or excuse me, one, zero, one, zero. So that's going to be A, B prime, C, D prime. Uh, someone on the Discord asked, can you group into an L shape? No, you can't. You can only do boxes and rectangles. And they have to be powers of two inside. So group of one, group of two, group of four, group of eight, group of 16. But no, no L shapes. All right. So that means our final answer here, we would say that our therefore f, which is a function of a, b, c, and d, is equal to a, b prime, c, D prime or A prime, B prime, D or B and C prime. All right, and there we go. Any questions about that? All right, let's do another one. Next example, f is a function of a, b, c, and d is equal to the sum of n terms 0, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 14, and 15. Block. 0, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 14, 15. All right, it's so the same deal. We go in, we plant ones at min terms. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And just like before, what do we get? What can we combine? The bottom two rows for sure. What will that get us? C. C. Good. All right. What else? What's that? The two on the first row. So we can do the two on the first row. We can actually do better than just those two. You talking about these guys? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So if we can combine them, we can also combine them with what else? Let me make a note here. So this, this one on the right-hand corner is 1, 0, 0, 0. This guy is 0, 0, 0, 0. So those guys combine, for sure. But what about this guy down here in the other corner? That's 1, 0, 1, 0. Can it combine with the top corner? 
What's that? Well, we're not, we're not, we're not there yet. I'm just saying those two cells, can they combine? Can I make a group of this one and this one? Not word on this one right now. Yeah? Are they adjacent? Right, there's only one bit, so one zero zero zero, one zero one zero, right? Just the bit in C position is different. What about the bottom left corner? That's gonna be zero zero one zero. Which means those guys can combine and you can combine with these guys. Which means what for the corners? Can we combine the corners? Yes. Good, yes? Yeah, absolutely, right? We just showed you could. Yeah, so we combine our four corners to get what? Good. Yeah, B prime. And D prime. Yeah. So don't forget, you can always combine the corners of a four or greater than that. Now we're not quite done yet. There's still one guy sitting out by himself. Yeah. What's that? The bottom of the the bottom ones. Yeah. Yeah. If they are also. Like, they're already, you're saying they're already in this group. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you, you're right, they're already accounted for, but we're, since we're using them as group terms that aren't already accounted for, it's always better to create a bigger group, right? It is still better, it will give you a more optimal solution to create a group of four than just to combine these two. Yeah. So what about our odd guy? Yes, ma'am. What's that? Because it'll give you a smaller term. Let's explore it. Let's see what happens. So if we have, so if we just combined, well, let's see, I need orange for this. If I said we just combined these two guys, what would that get us? That would get us B prime, C prime. C prime and D prime. So let's see. Now we already combined the group of four, right? Which gave us what? Or excuse me, the group of eight, the bottom two rows. What was that? It was a C. So that's the Boolean expression that we've got from doing the top two rows and these bottom, or excuse me, the top two up there and the bottom eight. Now if we just look at this expression, can we simplify this one using Boolean algebra? Yes. Yeah, what does it simplify to? Or rather, what, what theorem is used? What's that? Exactly, it's the elimination theorem. Which says that x or x prime y is equal to x or y, right? Which means algebraically we can simplify this to c or, guess what? b prime d. Which is what we would have gotten 
when we combine when we combine all four corners, we get B prime D prime. This is why it's always better to create a bigger group. A bigger group is going to oh no, is going to get us. a better solution. Is it a theory that we can reuse terms of that? Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a better way to do this? Sorry guys, the uh, projector is down. It says it's working on it. Okay. Well, we're talking about that. So, Say that one more time. So we can reuse terms on the term on that. Yeah, you can you can you reuse terms. So to combine terms that haven't been used yet. Um, guys in the Discord, just bear with me. The thing is reconnecting. I'll write this down for you guys too in just a moment. So remember when we did a three variable map? Nope. We have this. Well, maybe we remember this. One, 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 right? And so that was A, B, C, zero, one, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, right? And we saw that if we combined that term that gave us a prime c, and if we combined that term, that would give us or a and b, right? But if we combine these, so if we did that and then combined that term, let me scoot this over a little bit. A prime C or A B. So what is this group that's across here? Is B C. So if we have A prime C or A B or B C, right? What is this an example of? It's an example of the consensus theorem, right? So A prime and A gets us a consensus term B C, which means that this term is redundant and can be eliminated. And that's because, so the difference between this case and the one we just looked at is what? Was that? Is that there were, un, in the case we looked at, there were unused terms, right? So when you use unused terms to, like, and when you use used terms with unused terms to create bigger groups, right, that's all good. Where, what you don't want to do is create groups of terms that have already been accounted for, right? So if we had, um, I don't know, let's say like one up here, in the zero position, so we got here, 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 and then so maybe now we would do this term and this term, this first one gets us A prime, B prime. This is the one we just did, which is going to give us A, B. Right? Now we can use this term. So if we just did it by itself, that would give us what? Or A prime, B, C. Which will that combine with anything? We do get rid of A prime B and C. Do 
Well, we don't need to make a consensus term. This one's kind of weird. Um, but if we took, if we rearranged it and had a prime b or a prime b prime, or remember this is step three in our like weird algebraic simplification process, right? And then if we factored out the a prime, that would give us b prime or bc, right? Which then b prime or bc becomes good, becomes b prime or c. Then we distribute the a prime back in, we get a b a prime b prime or a prime c. The important thing is this one, the a prime c. Okay, it's coming back. Right? Which, by the way, well, hold on. How could we have gotten a prime c? On the map. Yeah, so we combine these two terms, gets us a prime and c, which is what we're looking for. Right? So all that to say is if you can combine terms to make a larger box, even if some of those terms are already accounted for, you will get an optimal solution. So you want to do that, but you don't want to just create groups from groups that have already been formed. That's kind of a long roundabout sort of esoteric thing. And this thing seems to have died more. Okay. Um I need to email somebody because this keeps happening. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I guess. Let's do this. I'm going to read the thing. So I want to work on these examples. For you guys in the Discord, guys, so I'm going to try to go back and forth. So give me like two seconds. I'm going to put this thing back on the board. Okay, so picking up an example that we were just working on. We got big four variable map. Zero, and then we had ones at corners. We have a big block of eight, and we have one guy right there, and then we have zero, 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 zero. And we just figured out that we could do this big block of eight. So our final answer is going to be that is function of a, b, c, and d is equal to first c. Then we did the corners. which gave us 4, b prime, b prime. And then finally, what's left is this guy right here. So what's the best move for this guy? The one at cell 5. Combine it to the one. What's that? Combine it to the one. Yeah, combine it to the one next to it. Can I combine it with both of these? No, why not? This has got to be a power of 2. So I'll combine those two, and what will those give me? 
So it'd be a a prime of b, a prime of b, and then d. A prime b and d. So yeah. So if I combine those two terms, I get a prime and b and d, which means our final answer, after all of that mess, f is a function of a, b, c, and d, is equal to c, or b prime, d prime, or what do we have? a prime, b, and d. William asks, so as long as you don't use all the blocks in a group to form other groups, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. There needs to be at least one block that wasn't used somewhere else to make it worthwhile. All right. Any questions about that? Yes, ma'am. Say that again. Where? Oh, like, can you do diagonal? No. No, it has to be vertical and horizontal. Yeah, you can't group diagonally. Okay, let's do another example. I'll write it here first, and then I'll write it, oh. So you guys bear with me, it's gonna be kind of awkward. I'm just gonna bounce back and forth between the tablet and the whiteboard. So the next example, we're gonna do F, the function of A, B, C, and D is equal to the sum of min terms 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, or the sum of don't cares 6, 12, and 13. So, you guys on Discord, start working on that map. Um. Yeah, so here what we're doing is function of f is a function of a, b, c, and d is equal to, like I said, the sum of midterms, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, or the sum of don't cares, 6, 12, and 13. So, let me draw my map real quick. Six, turn it seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, don't care, twelve, don't care, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So, over here, we're going to copy in, paste in our K map. Right on. So, like I said before, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Minch, don't care, at 6, 1 at 7, 0, 8, 1 at 9, 10, 11, don't care, is at 12, 13, 0 is at 14, and 15. Okay, so now, remember we talked about don't cares. And don't care is the ones that we can make them zeros or ones depending on what's useful. Now it's still kind of a pain to do it in Boolean algebra because you still have to see, all right, well if we make it a zero, what does that do for us? If we make it a one, what does that do for us? Don't care is really shine on K maps because you can really quickly and visually decide which ones you want to use and which ones you don't want to use. So 
At the same time, I'm going to skip over the part where I just ask you questions and just go straight for it. So the first thing we can do is we can combine this group of four, right? Group of four is always good, and that's going to give us a zero, so that's going to be a prime, and then d, so a prime and d. So, like I said, if we combine this big block of four, that's going to get us a prime and d. And then on the second row, I can use the midterm, or excuse me, use the dump here to make one big long row, All right? Which is going to give me what? Just c prime and d. And I can choose to ignore these other dump here. I can just say, well, those are going to be zeros. As long as I've covered up all of the ones, then I'm good. I've got what I wanted. So here, like I said, if we create a box on the second row, that's going to get us to C naught and D, which means that our final answer, F, is a function of A, B, C, and D. And I know I have my final answer because I do not care about those guys, I can choose to ignore them. So my final answer is a prime d or c prime d. So yeah, f is a function of a, b, c, and d is equal to a prime d or c prime d. Hey, look at that. We're back. Cool, so one more thing to do. Why, why, why? Nice. All right, I know we are technically over time, uh, but I do want to finish this one last example. So I'm going to change it up a little bit and I'm going to say this. So last example, up till now we've been finding the minimum sum of products expressions. Now I want to find the minimum product of sums. function f is a function of a, b, c, and d, although I'm still going to say it's equal to the sum of min terms, um, 0, 2, 3, 4, 8, 10, what did I say, 11, and 15. Okay, now I go ahead and drop in my empty map. All right, and we'll go ahead and populate it. So we have, so, blue, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So now, because I'm looking for a minimum product of sums, instead of grouping the ones, I'm going to group the zeros. So we can look at some ones will sort of, or some groups will sort of jump out at us. Hopefully, this big group of four zeros in the second row. Now, when we group these, remember, one, we're looking for product of sums, and two, we're grouping the zeros, which means we have to take the inverse. If we were grouping this guy like normal, that would just be C prime D, right? But to get our actual answer, we need to take the inverse, which means that's going to be C or D prime. And let's see, I can group two up here. 
Now, that would be ordinarily, let's see, that would be A, B, and D prime. But I'm going to take the inverse, and that's going to give me A prime or B prime or D. And then finally, I'll group these last two, which are going to be A prime, B, and C. And again, I want to take the inverse, which is going to give me A or B prime or C prime. So C and D, A, B, and D prime, A prime, B, and C. Yeah, okay, there we go. So our final answer as a minimum product of sums is C or D prime and A prime or B prime or D and A or B prime or C prime. And there we go. Any questions about that? All right. Yes, ma'am. Because the problem asked us to find the minimum product of sums, right? Ordinarily, we find the sum of products, right? It's the one we kind of used the most often. But if we're asked to find the product of sums, then we find the zero. Then we group the zeros. So it depends on what the question is asking. Cool. All right. I apologize for keeping you guys six minutes over time. Um, I'm glad the thing came back and we didn't have to jump back and forth the entire time. So um, don't forget, unit four is due tonight. Make sure you're managing your time properly. Get assignment five done um, before you have to do both it and exam one at the same time. And if there's no other questions, I'll see you guys on Friday. Thank you. What's up? Say that one more time. Yes. When I wrote them by themselves, obviously they don't need to be in parentheses. But when you combine them into your final solution, yeah, they should be in parentheses. Thank you.